seeing and what are you speaking? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? It's so much that the news want us to speak by showing us images and objects. And we see these images and objects as something that, wow, this is just really what's going on. Last night, I truly believe probably about three people, especially in Nashville, surrounding county, died. I seen so many ambulances. I seen so many fire trucks. I, I, I was in a jam that uh, it was it was spooky, eerie. That going down Hermitage, no lights. I'm talking about no lights when lightning is streaking across the skies. Rain is coming down so hard, like hail almost about to come out. And and, and I'm trying to get this uh, guy home that I work with me, and I'm like pleading the blood pleading the blood, applying the blood to whatever, because I don't want the lightning to hit me or hit this car, or hit any one of us in the car. So I had to plead the blood. No matter what he, he was saying, I had to say the right words. Because if we don't speak life, that means you're speaking death. You can't have, you can't have the one other, you can't have both. You can't speak life and death at the same time. You either got to speak life or you're going to speak death. Amen. And I began to speak and I began to tell him, I said, hey, man, I think it's something really happening because Pastor Furler had called me around 445 and he said, where you at? I said, I'm in Mount Juliet. He says, man, uh, my, my son lives in Madison. He says he's seen flashes and lights are out and bodies are everywhere. And I'm like, what? And, and I told uh, uh, Peyton, who I takes home and I said, hey, man, they said in your area is, is real bad. He said, man, that's conspiracy theory. You know, like, and I'm like, conspiracy? See, a lot of times we think everything is conspiracy theory, but God is trying to get you to pray against some things. It's not conspiracy theory. And when we got over in this area, especially going in Hermitage, it was dark. You can only see the headlights in front of you. Then I put on my blinkers because I didn't want nobody to do what? Hit me because ain't no lights. Ain't no, ain't, no, ain't no flashers, you know, the street lights. Ain't, ain't no light on the light pole. Ain't no, nothing flash. It's dark, it's pitch dark. The grocery stores are dark. The gas stations are dark. The restaurants we passing by, people are coming out, dark. It's just dark, police sirens going everywhere. Fire trucks going everywhere. In the midst of chaos, what are you speaking? In the midst of craziness, what are you saying? Because I guarantee you a lot of people were speaking what? Wrong. I guarantee you a lot of people were speaking what? Deaf. I guarantee you a lot of people, and, and now they're saying uh, it might not be to a whole week for some of the people in, in Hendersonville. My brother and his wife in Hendersonville, they don't have lights. He said it might be to Friday or Saturday, the next week, but you got to go through the cold. You got to go through the storms. And, and I don't know about you, you know, I think the worst, it really ain't the heat, it's the storm. I mean the cold, for, especially for us, because we can't take it. And, and the reason why we can't take it is because we're not used to the what? Storm. I mean the cold. Thank you. We, we, used, to the, we used to the heat, but we ain't used to the what? Cold. Because when it's cold, it's cold. Amen? I remember times we had our lights out, and it was cold. We had to wrap up, make do what it do, I know it's complaining, it's cold in here. We wish we could go to a hotel. We wish we could go over somebody's house. And, but we had to make a way. I don't know what God made a way for us. And, and the reason why he made a way, because my mom, she kept on speaking what life. She kept on speaking what life. No matter what situation, whatever situation we, we find ourselves in, we got to speak life. Last month, I didn't, I didn't make my quota. I was supposed to be fired at the beginning of the month, and I kept on telling Daya, I don't know. They might let me go. But then if they let me go, hey, I got to go. There's nothing else you can do. Uh, a lot of times, I think we get comfortable at a place when God is trying to move us. And I say, well, whatever the Lord wants to happen, let his will be what? Done. Because you know what? We're living in a life, guys, of ups and what? Downs. It's like a roller coaster, up and down. 
When we went to this year on our vacation, my kids tricked me on a, a light roller coaster, but it's still a roller coaster. And I was hollering. I said, why did y'all do me like this? They all got me on one. Told me it's a kitty roller coaster. Well, the roller coaster had was swerving me back and forth, ups and downs. And I said, I didn't never, I'm never getting on a ride again. See what I'm speaking? I never. So next time we go on a park, a theme park, you'll never see me on one of them type of rides. I will have to get on the rides that Caleb and Noah can get on. The safe rides. Amen. Amen. Because Michaela, if you go with her, she's 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 an evil Knievel sister. For those who know Eva Knievel, he's dangerous. He do anything. Amen. But we're gonna talk about life and what death. Even Elle said she didn't want to get on some of the rides. After Michaela tricked into the rides, Elle said, no, nah, not again. She learned her lesson. Amen. And, and, and she said, I ain't getting on the rides. You go, you go, you do it by yourself. What's that little meme that went viral? Uh, you let somebody else do it. <laughs> Tell somebody else to do it. Yeah. Don't. Get somebody else to do that, because I don't want to do it with you. Amen. And, that, and that's what we have to uh, we have to do. Amen. We got to get somebody else to do it. But anyway, let's get right into this message real quick. I won't be long before you. Uh, yeah, my daughter, uh, Laura, she did have a, a baby. We was at the hospital uh, on the, uh, Friday, Friday night at 6.15. The baby came. It's eerie, man, because, you know, a new life come on the scene, and I'm looking at this baby, man, uh, that was in a womb. I'm looking at this baby that only God can bring this baby to pass. And I start looking at many babies through the nursery. Have all these babies that come to the earth, they got a purpose that God designed for each baby to be. And, I, and that's what I was thinking about when I was looking at the baby. And the baby had to go through so many shots, a couple of shots, had to be slapped on, had to be uh, uh, under a heater. And I'm looking at that, and, and Jonna and uh, Michaela looking at the baby, and they had me laughing inside. Dang, they got to do this to the baby? I said, we all got done like this. Amen. Sticking stuff down her nose to clean her nose out, you know. I, everybody has to go this way. And I, and I start thinking about how precious this really life is. You know, especially when you do it God's way, right? And, and I found out, guys, uh, you know, just looking at James, and he's shocked. <laughs> and Hope trying to say, talk to the baby, because he's in the room, we behind the glass. And, and say, trying to comfort the baby. And he just... And, and you shocked because this comes from you. This comes from you guys. But God wants you to raise him or her up in the fear of God. Where they, they begin to speak what? Life. And not what? Death. Because, you know, we can all say things that goes wrong in our lives. We can say, this ain't going right, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this. But what do you really have? I really have eternal life. I really have God in my life. And if I got God in my life and on my side, then the Bible says, who can really defeat us? If God is on your side, how can you go wrong? Think about that. And, and I started thinking about it last night as I was driving. I, and I said, hey, God, ain't no, ain't no cargo hitters. Ain't nobody gonna run out and try to jack us. Ain't none of that happening. You know what I mean? And the reason why I'm saying that because I know when it gets dark, the devil likes to show his head. Or his hand. Amen? So, so well, watch this, people of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse uh, 37, real quick. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, 37, we're going to see what uh, Jesus was talking about uh, to, to his own disciples. And he says, watch this, he says, in verse, uh, we'll start in uh, verse 35. A good man, a good man out of the good treasure of his what? Heart. Look at that word. A good man out of the treasure 
of his heart. You remember what the word of God says, the bonnet of the heart, the mouth of what? Speak. You remember what I said, we got to watch. Me and my sister was talking about this, Elder Michelle. We, we, we have to watch what, we, what comes out of our what? Mouth. But, but the real thing, we got to watch what goes into our what? Heart. Because if, if the bonnet of the heart, the mouth speaks, then no matter what, if, if the right things ain't in the heart, then I'm speaking what? Death. If I'm hearing and seeing the wrong things, then I can start speaking what? The wrong things is death. You can ask yourself, the only reason why you ain't bringing forth good things is because you're bringing forth death things. A lot of times we don't realize there is power in the tongue. I used to look at my mom and I thought she was cuckoo for cocoa puff, crazy as a bitty bat. She had plants and she, they would look like they about to die. And we would say, they dying, mama, just give them up, let them go. Mama said, hey, that baby ain't dying. Ain't she not dying? Are we looking at, are she crazy? Can she not see the, the leaves are drying up? Ain't nothing. And, and she keeps on talking to it and feeding it water. And, and, and guess what? A couple of days, the plant is thriving. I said, do a plant has ears? Do a plant has ears? No. But when she kept speaking to the plant, and the plant what? Blossoms and grows from death. And we were saying no. And that's how, that's how I say we can override what somebody else is speaking what? Death. You can override what your family members are speaking death over you. You can override what somebody speaking deaf and wrong over you. Amen? But it's, it, it becomes, he says, the good, he says, the good treasure of his heart bringing forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things. So you got to ask yourself, why, what, what, why is the evil stuff coming my way? Or why, thank God for the good stuff is coming my way? Because you can't have both. You have good. Or you have what? Evil. Right? So he says, watch this, people of God. He says, but I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. That's why we got to be we got to be careful with idleness of our words. Just let little things come out of our mouth. We, we speak things and say, oh, he looked like he could be gay. Or she looked like she could be suspect. You don't know that. Why would you speak that over your cousins, your siblings, your kids? Why would you speak that over them? i never forget I told him. I said, quit calling him stupid. Quit calling her dumb. We, we don't realize we're shaping our own kids because we are speaking deaf even over them. Because what we get a letter from the teacher, are you dumb? Are you crazy? Uh, and, it, and because we speak in wrong over our people. And what we need to begin, begin to speak is what? Life. That's why I said, and stop that. When I was in the young, and I, 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 I know they were trying to speak it over me. Oh, he's slow. He can't learn. He, 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 he you know, and I, and, I, and I received it. And I went to my guidance counselor, even when I got in high school, I said, I can't learn. I put me in a special class. And they didn't want to do it. They said, you can't learn. I said, please put me in a special class. I, that's easy for me. Because I didn't want to be challenged. I said, because for all my life, since I was in uh, first grade, second, third, fourth, fifth, they told me I was slow. So like, by the time I got to eighth, ninth grade, I said, why am I not in the slow class? They call that the D09 back in my day. Amen. Amen. I wanted to. They wouldn't, my God is kind of, they said, you're not slow. You just don't want to learn. You just don't want to do it. Puts me to my next point. The Bible talks about uh, uh, faith without works is what? Dead. So if I don't do the work, then I can't produce the faith that they're speaking in you and I. And one of my, my God is kind of said, you ain't slow, Luke. You're very smart. You can do what you want to do. And, and, I, and, and you know that, that changed the whole uh, parameter in my life, people of God. And you say, how did that change you? Well, it changed me because I realized, guys, that this lady was telling me the truth. She said, you don't have to be like that. You don't have to allow them, them words right there to enter into you. 
You can really do it. You can really make it. You can really be something in life. You don't have to have the words shape your life. You know, you know, it's a move I heard all my life. That's all I've been told. All my life. That's all I've been told. I went the prettiest. I went, I was the ugly. I was the ugly duckling. All my life, I was told I wouldn't get nobody. All my life, I was told uh, 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 I was crazy or whatever. Quit allowing that. Every negative word been spoken against me, I counsel it in the spirit realm, in the natural realm, that it won't come to pass. Every person that speaks uh, some type of misunderstanding of me, it won't come to pass. In the spirit realm, remember I told you when the Lord showed me being speaking, but he won't allow me to hear them? I used to ask myself when I see this with my eyes open, what are they saying? And God says, I'm blocking them from what they're saying in the spirit realm, but I want you to come against what they are saying against you. And I used to say, and remember I was telling you I was saying like Hebrew letter words or, uh, and I found out by looking at Trey uh, Smith's thing uh, this morning, them are Hebrew words. I don't un understand Hebrew words, but they come across the wall. These are words that say something. And he says, anytime that you see Hebrew words, I heard him this morning. He says, God has called you to king, kingship. Kingship. But if, if, but if I don't walk like a king and act like a peasant, act like a, a person of slavery, then guess what? I'm going to act that way. That's why now I understand the Bible says, whatever a man think he is, so is what? He so is he. So, so guys, we, we, we're here to say, you know what? The only way, the only way we begin to do what God is calling us to do is we begin to speak the right things in our lives, right? So he says, watch this. He says, for by your words, you will be what? Justified. Justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. So, if I'm speaking that I'm not smart, if I'm speaking that I don't know how I'm going to get the food or money or clothes or Christmas stuff, you know, some people, oh, man, it's going to be a bad Christmas for me. They already saying it. It will be one for you. I don't know. We ain't going to have no food this Christmas. You're right. It was, you saying it. But if you say, oh, well, we have more than enough. We don't have all. We're going we to have more than what we had last year. My daughter just told me, she said, I want me a, we didn't get no, since we didn't get one for Thanksgiving, we didn't get no honey bake, uh, uh, turkey or ham. I told Danielle, well, we'll get it this one. Since she wants it, she spoke it. We should go get that ham. Amen. See, see, because, see, we, we speak things into being. Amen. Danielle, I said, Danielle, it'll be good. We make one of them blueberry pies because, you know, it, you know, my brother made one. We didn't get him but a little piece of his. And she, I kept speaking. And she said, when you going to go get the pies? Mm. Faith that thou works is what? Dead. So she spoke, said, when you go get the pies? She made the what? Pies. So we have what we say, people, when we speak the right things. And we have what we say even when we speak what? The wrong things. Amen. So, so, guys, I'm telling you guys, I'm, I'm only telling you this because we have to see ourselves how God sees us. Amen. We have to see ourselves how God sees us. That's why he says, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be what? Condemned. Think about that. We keep on, we keep on I like when Minister Merrill talking about when she did the prayer over the offering. Yeah, and Lord, we thank you for the church already. We got to start saying that every day. We thank you for the building already. I heard a minister has told me, uh, especially when I used to be in Franklin first, he was out of town. And, and he said, man, the, the city gave him a big old building for one penny. Mm. So don't tell me what God can't do. See, we're always looking at the money. Oh, the money. We ain't got the money. How we going to raise? We'll, everything we're going to have to do building fund because everybody else did a building fund. God says, I will give you land and property that you didn't even work for. But if we ain't speaking the right things, it's talking about, how we go do it? I don't know. It's look to, this mountain looks too big. How we go get a house? How you go get a house? And I got plenty of pennies. We all get a house for a penny. 
My piggy bank fat with pennies. Amen. But God is trying to do something big in our lives. Well, we begin to speak right instead of speaking what wrong. Then my daughter back speaking about puppies and stuff. Got me back looking for what? Puppies. Amen. Just got me just speaking. Got, a, got all my kids saying puppy. I said, what y'all want for Christmas? Puppy. I asked Kayla, puppy. I asked Elle, puppy. She done got them speaking puppy. <laughs> Kayla put it on the head. See, I, they, they, they don't want a court. They said, we don't want nothing but a puppy. They all on one sink. Puppy. They speaking. Then they said, no, we need to get a house for that puppy. Cause. Then they ever begin to speak house for puppy. But they speaking. And they putting it on my heart. And they putting it on the father's heart. And the father's working to get all that for us. But we got to what? Speak it. We got to speak life. Then Danielle, don't think I know, she went online and filled out a house. She already moving ahead. Amen. She think I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Well, she said, what you wear my business up for? <laughs> <laughs> she's speaking it. Amen. Amen. She's going she to have what she's saying. Amen. 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 So, so, guys, I'm, what I'm, the reason why I'm saying this, guys, because if we don't start speaking right, then we're going to keep on receiving wrong. We're going to keep on receiving evil. How can God save any one of our family? We keep on saying they, they destined for hell. Think about it. Well, they are. Look how they act. Remember how you act when you wasn't saved, when somebody was trying to tell you. And see where you at now. Are you still on the train, fast train track to hell? No, you're not. But somebody had to speak faith and prayer to cover you and get us into the kingdom. Amen. Somebody had to see further than what you saw. That's why I say quit, quit speaking death over your kids, over your brothers and sisters, over your aunt. My auntie, she destined for hell. Why would you say that? My in-laws, they both destined for hell. Why would you say that? Why? Do you think God wants them? My Bible tells me in the book of Ezekiel, God says, I, 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 I wish that, that no man... I don't wish that evil and evil people go to hell. That's what your Bible says. He said, I wish that no man go to hell. Amen? But we, we, we have to begin to speak what? Life. And not what? Death. And, and that's just any, you know, you see your son. Are you stupid? Why would you call your son or your daughter stupid? Maybe they didn't perceive or understand. You know what you're putting in them? I'm, I must be stupid. It's all I hear. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stuck on stupid. Then if they, they, they feel a certain way, they go act a certain way. Especially when you got kids small. You can't call them stupid and dumb. Then you, they said, my own mama who birthed me, my daddy birthed me, they don't believe in me. Why do you think a lot of kids grow up to be a menace to what? Society. I'm preaching this one. Amen. Because this, because we speaking, we speaking like, man, you weird. Quit saying that. You gonna be the one uh, uh, creating a bomb in your room to blow up and tap. Why say that? Why put that in their spirit? I will never say stuff like that. I speak my kids to be blessed. I speak my kids' kids to be blessed before they even come here. I speak my great, great, great kids, first, third, and fourth, fifth generation kids, even when I'm gone to be blessed. I, I, I speak it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Everything they touch, I speak that they will follow uh, God all the way. They kids will follow God all the way. I speak that you remove every hindrance away from them. Wicked friends, wicked cousins, wicked family members who trying to deter them to go the evil route. In Jesus' name. Amen? See, we, we have to begin to say, I speak it. I'll never forget I heard Kat Kerr said this. She said, for some of you people in marriage, you need to start speaking love, passion in your marriage. You got to. Marriage can be stale sometimes. Marriage can be dull sometimes because we keep doing the same thing. But you have to speak it. 
life even into your marriage. Speaking life into yourself. I will, when my husband or wife say something, ask me to do, I just get up and do it. Instead of giving them uh, the live, Negro, you go do it. What? Don't say that. And then some of us want to call ourselves Proverbs 31 women. You ain't speaking right to him. Or vice versa, you ain't speaking right to her. I read a scripture and it says, he it says, you husband, I read it on Facebook last, this past Wednesday. He said, your prayers can be hindered just how you speak into one another. That's why I said, we don't even realize this. That's why the Bible says, the fruits of the spirit is kindness. And you know, through marriage people, they don't like to be what? Kind to one another. Because they think kind, we, you taking advantage over me. And forgetting that the scripture, if we have the word in our heart all the time, the Bible said, uh, 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 pray for them that what? Despitefully use you. Are you praying for them? Don't give people what they giving you. Give them peace. Hello, somebody. Mm, I'm speaking true because ain't no but one person said amen. Amen. And the reason why I'm saying this, guys, is because why I'm saying life and death is in the power of the tongue, it's because it really is. It really is. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. We'll read that scripture real quick. Proverbs chapter uh, 18. Amen. Proverbs 18. Praise God. It, it really is. Life and death is this, really in the power of your tongue. Amen. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. Where's my Bible at? I mean, 18, that's 1821, my bad. Proverbs 18, uh, hmm, 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Watch the Amplify. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life is yours. Let's look at that. Look at the amplifier. How much you indulging in it? How much you indulging in life? And how much you indulging in death? Amen? How much you really indulging in it? You know, one thing I tell people, man, it, I go down speaking right, even though I'm going out of here. You want me to agree to you? Just to go ahead and lay down, close my eyes? You go lay down and close your eyes and go on out of here. But I'm going to speak what? Life until I close my last eye. Okay? And I'm going to speak life. I, I was listening to Danielle. She said she went to see her granddaddy who just turned, what, 90, right? 90, 91? Right? And she said, Granddaddy, God can heal you. But Granddaddy said, I don't believe in all that. That was before Jesus and disciples days. And I said, well, Daniel, he's speaking it. You can't force, God will never override people's faith. You can only just pray for people. So he walks in blindness from diabetes. That ain't, that ain't just, I had one brother tell me, he said, no, nah, brother, I did so much wrong. i never forget that. He had cataract. I believe God put this on me. I said, where are you getting that from? He speaks it. So he have it. I never forget we was at the opera mill, me, Rick, and Prophet, Prophet Rick, and Christian, and uh, another person. We seen a lady in line with a boot on her leg. Y'all know I had a boot on my leg in 2017, because it broke my ankle. And uh, I just went up to her. She was in the food line. And I said, hey, man, we are ministers. And you know, uh, you in the pain? She said, yeah. <laughs> Look at the boot. I'm in pain. I said, can we pray for you? She said, nah. First she said, she was about to say yes, but she started looking at the people. And she said, nah, I'm good. <laughs> she said, I don't need it. I'm good. I said, you sure? We would love to pray to ask God to remove it. She said, nah, I don't know about that. So we weren't able to bring her relief. Because she kept on saying, I don't know about that. Amen. But the Bible do says death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
And those who love it will eat it, eat it, eat its fruits. Watch this one. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3, it says, Whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Whoever keeps his mouth in his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. You know, Friday, uh, it was excited going to the hospital and seeing the baby, but I had a craving for Uncle Mattio's pizza in Murfreesboro. It's the only pizza place in Murfreesboro. And so I stopped over my sister's house after I left the hospital, and Uncle Maddie was closed at 10, so I was with my sister's house where I got 10 out the 9, and she said, you better get out of here, man. That pizza place is about to close, close if you don't get over there. And I said, yeah, I'm going to get over. She said, call and order it in. And I said, no, nah, I like to order it in because they make it right in front of you. I said, I want to I wanna, uh, get there. So I'm driving fast, going through. I went through one light. It was hitting yellow, but it hit red when I went through. So I got through that one. So I, I went through the second light. Michaela knocked out sleep. And the police seen me as I went through this other light. It was yellow, but it hit red as I was going through it. And he put his lights on. He said, boo, woo, woo, woo. I said, oh, Lord. I said, Lord, give me grace and mercy. What happened was I got pulled over by the police. I was thinking, Lord, how you going to get me out of this one? <laughs> Because usually in Nashville, I get pulled over. They, they know me because of, uh, I do ministry work for the jails and prisons and stuff like that. So I'm saying, but I'm in Murfreesboro. Is, are you the same guy that from Nashville to Murfreesboro? <laughs> God said, yes, I am. I said, well, it, it, it just told me, just be still and watch it. And I was a little nervous because I said, man, I don't need a ticket. Not in Rutherford County. I ain't never, you know, I ain't had a ticket in almost 20 some years. Right? So I'm like, I don't need a ticket. And the police came to my, 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 my window, rolled my window down. He said, you know you went through that light? I said, yeah, I missed it, man. I said, my, my daughter just had a, a child and um, uh, a baby. I did, I said, my, 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 daughter, my daughter just had a baby and I'm, I'm trying to get to Uncle Mattio's because they're, trying to, they're about to close at 10. And that's the only reason why I was rushing through the light. And this is my first, uh, uh, I'm first, I'm a f granddad. I'm first trying to be, a, he said, man, well, congratulations, but I still need your license for registration. <laughs> insurance. I had to pull up my insurance on my phone because I, you know, they don't, I ain't got a card, so I, I showed him on my phone. He said, I'll be right back. This won't take long. Give me about five minutes, sir. And I was just standing, I said, Lord, come on. Now it's 9.20. And I'm like 10 or 15 minutes away from what Uncle Matty old piece. I'm like, man, this dude need to hurry up. It's close to almost 9.30. I remember just impatient. Lord said, be patient, be patient, be patient. So he finally came back to the car. He said, Miss Phillips, uh, I understand. I got four kids. I understand it's your first grandson. Well, I'm going to give you a warning this time. You better see it. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, sir. God bless you. He said, you're welcome. He said, get, drive, S slow down. You'll get to your destination. Get back to the hospital, but slow down. I wasn't going back to the hospital. I was going to get that pizza. But in his mind, he thought I was trying to get back to the hospital. I wasn't going back to no hospital. I told him, Uncle Mattios, he just, he let Uncle Mattios go over his head and just talk about the baby, okay? So I understood that. He said, who was that laying down? I said, this was my youngest daughter. She knocked out of sleep. I, so she, so he won't think I was sex trafficking. You know what I mean? I, hey, you know, because he did, he did ask me if I had any gun, and she a little young girl just laying down sleep, turned over like that, like she trying to hide her face with a coat over here. I ain't tell her to do that. I'm just, hey, that's my youngest daughter now. Hold up now. I don't want no trouble. We don't want to be pulled out the car, shot at, amen, and put on the ground, okay? So you got to speak right. I, I, when, and the reason why I'm saying you got to speak right and calm, even with a police officer, because too much going on, especially with us black folk. Man, you talk crazy. Hey, what you want? Oh, you want that heat. He, he, he looking, the police looking for some of that. Yo, you my type of guy. Hey, man, that's why I said, I speak right. Yes, Mr. Officer. I, I don't want to, because guess what? If I start speaking kind of crazy and bringing drama to him, he going to bring the drama back to me. So I speak right. I speak calm. Do you got any weapons in your car? No, I don't. Hey, Amen. Do you? It, 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 who is that on the side? Oh, that's my daughter. She just tired. We just left the hospital, like I was telling you. 
Amen. Because I don't want I don't want people to assume. I want to get all this, you know, where your insurance card on my phone. Hold on, let me get it. My, the ones in my in my glove box they expired. Look at how I'm, I'm speaking, guys. I'm not speaking like agitated, nervous. What you want? Why you do me? I'm black. Why you pull me over? Because I'm black. I didn't do none of that. And the reason why I'm saying this, guys, because watch this. If you speak right and calm and peace, then calm and peace will come back to you. Y'all just seen what I, I got a warning. I supposed to got a tick because I didn't make it through that light. It hit red. I seen it. I was halfway through it. I admitted to him. Yeah, I did. But I'm trying to get to a place. I'm trying to get to a destination. <laughs> And I told him, yeah, I, I know I went through that light because I went through the first light and then second light I tried to get through and it didn't work. It was a police right there on the side looking at me. But praise be to God, I only got a warning. Amen. Amen. I ain't got time to go to Rutherford County and to their courts. Amen. I ain't never been in Rutherford County courts. I don't know how they operate. Amen. I ain't got time. But God worked it out. Praise be to God. Amen. So watch this, the Psalm 23, uh, uh, verse 1. We already know this one, but I, I read it. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Watch this, people of God. I should not want. And the reason why he's saying it, because God is all we need. If we got God, we got everything, really. We got God, everything at our excess. We got everything at our beck and call. Because our father said, he says, I'm a good father. He said, I'm a good, he said, I give to my children. He said, I give good gifts to my kids. Just like you or evil fathers give gifts. How much more would your heavenly father, if you just ask? Just ask, Lord, Lord, I wouldn't mind having that car. Lord, I wouldn't mind having that house. He said, you serve a God that will give it to you. He says, I'll give you even the very desires of your what? Heart. You want to be healed? God wants you to be healed. You want to live in peace? God wants you to be in peace. He says, I wish that you be prosperous and abundant, having everything, even as your soul prosper. Why, why believers think we got to live broke, busted, and disgusted? Why we got to believe that? Why, why we got to believe we can't have the best, but the wicked can have the best? Uh, we, we got the game. Why we think... Being poor or don't have too much or nothing, it keeps us humble. Are you crazy? Keeps your hands out like cups. That's all it's going to do. No hand, you, you, it's form as a cup. Always open, fuck. But the Bible says it's more blessed to what? Give than to what? Receive. And we wonder why. I'm preaching. Amen. So he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I should not what? He makes me lie down in what? He leads me beside what? Why he lead you? Because he said you need to be peaceful. You need to rest. Let the Lord handle your battle. Let the Lord. See, the Lord need to handle. He can handle my battle, your family battle. He said, I done took her the whole world. We used to sing that when we was kids. He owned the whole world in his hand. He owned the whole world. In his hand, he owns the whole world. In his hand, he owns the whole what? Whatever they say. He got the whole world in his hand. Y'all know what I'm saying. He, he, he owns the whole world. If he owns the whole world, then he got me in his hand. He got your family in his hand. He got your, he know what you need. But we keep on saying, man, God don't know. God, he must don't like me. <laughs> God, God must don't care for me. I heard one person tell him, no, he, he favored you more. I said, there you go, that black sheep mentality. I'm the black sheep of the family. Who told you that? The devil. God says, you my precious one. God says, I look at you as the apple of my eye. He says, when my kids cry, I'm beckoning to they call. So you ain't crying right. <laughs> you crying the wrong. You crying the wrong. <laughs> that ain't the way to cry. That ain't the right, that ain't the right way to cry. You got to cry like blind Barnabas. Jesus! Oh, my God. That's the way you got to cry. See, that's two ways to cry. Yes, Lord. Cry. <laughs> I said, won't you go take your butt and lay down and rest? <laughs> Amen. You need a rest. 
need some still water. You need to turn on the ocean sound in your room and let the water just put you to sleep. Amen. I'm talking about some still water. Okay, somebody say still water. <laughs> Amen. He restores my what? Soul. He leads me in the path of what? Righteousness for his what? He, even though I walk through the valley of what? Shadow of death. I ain't going to feel no evil. I ain't stand by no devil. No matter what evil you're trying to throw this way, devil, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to complete its assignment. I drive every evil devil, demon, spirit, principality, ruler of darkness, witch, spells, warlock, hex, uh, 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 hoojus, mojo, voodoo. I cast that ooh, ooh out of here right now in Jesus' mighty name. Everything. Pain, sickness, disease, infirmity, word curse, bipolar spirits, uh, 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 generation curses, soul ties. Break now in Jesus' mighty name. What's that thing that the world is all involved with? Illuminati. Get out of here in Jesus' name. Hey Amen. I break it all. See, when you speak right, you, 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 you live good. You have the good. But when you're speaking wrong, they get they out to get us. Who out to get you? See, we're always fighting against one another. But we don't know, we don't fight against the principalities, the rulers of darkness. Where? In high places. He said, I will feel no what? Evil. I ain't scared of the devil. Amen. I ain't scared of demons. I ain't afraid of principalities. Amen. For you are with me. Who with me? Come on, y'all. Look at that. Why you say, he said, oh, Lou, go ahead. I'm out there with you. They ain't going to touch you. Why you think I ain't afraid? When the, when the Lord told me to go to the bottom that time, most people, I ain't going there, man. I heard they, they, they robbing people. You, they got crack out of everywhere. I said, I'm going. The Lord going to say, he with me. I ain't scared of no dope boy, crackheads. And I went out. Same time when the Lord told me to go to the jails, the prison. I ain't afraid. I about to say, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Amen. That's ghost bust. I bust the I bust the devil up in Jesus' name. Amen. Demons trying to grab at me, Danielle. Guess what I did? Jesus! Them demons had a what? Let me go. Amen. They got to go. He on the scene. Amen. Jesus is so fast, he's faster than Superman. He faster than a what? Speeding bullet. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, Jesus is fast on you, boy. That's all you got to call him. Tell you it's the right way to cry. Amen. It's the right way to cry. I ain't crying. <laughs> Look, the devil's open. He on my trail. Uh, get him off. No, that ain't the way to cry. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, man. I just got, I just learned to speak life and not what? Death. Amen. Amen. I ain't scared of the boogeyman. Amen. I ain't scared of the Jeepers Creeper, Freddy, Nightmare, Johnny, Rocky, whoever you want to call. I ain't afraid of none of them in Jesus' mighty name. I ain't afraid of the lady who can spin her neck in the back. That's a demon. I cast that spell out of her right now. Amen. Leave her neck alone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, that's, that's, yeah, y'all play too much. Amen. I, I, I ain't afraid of none of that. Amen. Some of y'all, if, uh, if a lady start, what is that, levitating? Yeah, some of y'all that hit these doors and, and won't come back. Amen? Because y'all scared. Church folks is the most scariest person because they ain't been trained right. Bless their hearts. They ain't been trained. They scared of, of things. If the doors start opening and the plates start rattling and stuff, they out of there. God ain't, God ain't signed me up for this. Yeah, he did. He told you you going to come against what? Prince of politics, ruler of darkness, where? in high places. You don't think they can move a plane? Move a chair? Amen. They can. But guess what? We ain't having that. Amen? We ain't having it. Let me give you one more scripture, guys. He says, I will feel no evil because you are with me. He said, your rod and your staff do what? You prepare me, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my what? You anointed my head with what? My cups, what? My cup overflows. Shoot, the overflows of blessing. I speak, I speak that on every last one of us. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen? Amen. Proverbs 21, 23. He says, whoever keeps his... I already read it. I'm sorry. Proverbs 13, 3. Whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. And who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. That's why you can't just be saying anything. You ruin your own life. Why do you think the Bible says no man can tame the word? He said this little member is taking a lot of people to what? Hell. It sets a course of hell and fire. No man can tame this tongue. That's why he says whoever guards his mouth. But if you don't guard it, you'll ruin your mouth, your life. Amen? Amen. One more. Matthew chapter 21, 21. Jesus answered them and said, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, oh, it will happen. That's how powerful your words are. If only you don't doubt. I tell people before I pray for them, are you doubting? Well, yeah, a little bit. Well, well, let's get that right. Say, Father God, we remove all doubt. Faith, come in. I trust in you. You, you bigger than the devil. Some of us make the devil bigger than God. Well, but Pastor, I don't know where, where the, how I'm going to get the money. Uh, I said, do we serve the great I am? Do we serve the God that told the children of Israelite, I'm the I am. That means I'm everything you can ask me to be. Sometimes we just got to be, we got to put it back in people's mind to reflect. What did God do for them? Uh, he said he's not the, he's not, he's the same God. Yesterday and forevermore, he said, I change not. He said, if I did it for them, will I not do it for you? I think sometimes we can easily forget this stuff, man. Because we've got our eyes on the mountain. He just said it. He says, and Jesus, I said, truly, truly, verily, verily, I said to you, if you have faith, do not doubt. You will not only do what has been done to this fig tree. Remember I talked about how you can curse something? He cursed the fig tree, and the fig tree did what? With it up. He said, the same thing I'm telling you, you got the power in your mouth. If I, he said, if I can curse a fig tree, what are you cursing? You're cursing your own people. You're cursing your own self. You're cursing your own finances. Talking about you keep on, I'm broke as a joke. No, stop saying it. He says, let the rich, he says, let the poor say they what? Rich. He said, let the sick say they what? Healed. He telling you to say the right things, but you keep saying the wrong. Well, I ain't, I'm just being real. I ain't going to lie. You ain't lying. Uh, uh, the Bible says, speak those things which are what? Not. Though it may what? Be. Come on, y'all. We got to start speaking. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a big hand of praise. I told you I ain't going to be long. Amen.